Welcome to the Connect with County Leaders podcast with your host, Brian Hill. Hello, and welcome to Connect with County Leaders. I'm Brian Hill. And in this edition, I am joined with Dr. Who doesn't like to be called doctor, but I have to give you your props. Dr. Michelle Reed, superintendent of Fairfax County Public Schools. How are you doing? I could not be better, Brian. Could not be better. Could not be better. <laughs> well, do tell, because <laughs> I want to know why you're so good. Because I'm in Fairfax County. That's what I wanted there to hear. You go. So let's 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 do this really quick. You came from where? I came from the North Shore School District, which is a suburb on the east side of Seattle. And that school district had approximately how many students? We had about 24,000 students. And you are now in Fairfax County, and you were appointed on July 1st, 2022, to a school district with how many students? 181,489. That's a big jump, isn't it? It is. What an exciting opportunity. Now, I just want the fans, or not the fans, to know, who was the first person that called you when you were appointed? Now, Brian, that's like a self-serving that. question, I but I, like I will say it, may, it meant the world to me that you were the first person that called. So the evening I was um, named, I really appreciate that. Well, I just wanted you to know this. We are great thought partners. We're going to continue to be great thought partners. I thought it needed to start on day one. It has started on day one. And I'm very so thrilled that you took and accepted this challenge to be on our podcast today because this is not something that county leaders typically do. But I think it is something that we should do. We should do. So why don't we give the, the audience a little overview of Dr. Michelle Reed, sorry, Michelle Reed and who you are. And what is it that you're going to bring to Fairfax County? Well, thank you, Brian. I think first and foremost, I'm a committed and dedicated educator. So really want to stay mission driven on the success of each and every one of our students here in Fairfax County. And just really excited about the possibilities here, the strong community support. Um, And as you know, Brian, leadership is a team sport, right? And you're a key member of that team for me and have really been gracious in supporting my entry and transition into the community. Uh, It's our, I think, mutual interest to have Fairfax County Public Schools be that lighthouse division for our country, just as our county is as well. So just looking forward to partnering with you and supporting our amazing educators, students, families, and staff here in Fairfax County. So this is a little question I have for you before we go into the more robust questions. What have you seen as a difference between Washington and Fairfax County, other than the size, obviously, but what is the differences that you've seen? And we've talked about this a couple of times. We have. What are the differences you see? Well, I mean, other than the weather, <laughs> so, and we don't have the Seahawks here, yeah. so I'm just saying, or the Seattle um, Storm basketball team. But I, I'm going to get used to you know supporting some new teams. I think in terms of uh, just, I think the size obviously is different. However, I think that the region here is so well resourced. The community is so supportive of our schools, and I think that. Um, that's such a strong positive because learning happens best in community. And when you have strong community support, um, that's just really a powerful positive for our children. Well, as you've stated, you know, partnerships are, are continued success right. in, this, in this community because we have a strong community support. When you look at your partners, talk to me a little bit about the, some of the partners you've been able to engage with and how they've helped you transition into this great job because, you know, I believe that we work in the best place in America, and you have brought a different style and a different work ethos, which I'm truly humbled to be a part of. But we do have community leaders that are also trying to change. How do you think that's going? So I I think it's been really um, telling. I first of all really need to give props to our elected school board and their commitment to education and their leadership in the Commonwealth and across the country and their views um, and the collaborative spirit of the board of supervisors yeah. and the chair and yourself. I think that that cooperation, you know, together all things are possible, right? So that's the first and foremost uh, partnership. I know that uh, the police department, for example, here in Fairfax County, Chief Davis and our security department have had a strong partnership 
And in, I think the last few months, as we look back and as we look forward, uh, you just can't underscore how important those partnerships are. Um, our early childhood partnerships, our food and critical services, uh, social and mental health services, health department uh, cooperation, all of those partnerships I think are really critical. You know, as I said, um, leadership's a team sport and uh, we've all, I think, have a shared interest and that's when, you know, sky's the limit, anything's possible. Well, I really appreciate you saying that because our elected leaders have been absolutely phenomenal, whether it be at the school board, whether it be the board of supervisors. You know, um, my, on my board, I have, I believe, three former school board members, uh, mm -hmm. Supervisor Dahlia Palchik from Providence, right. uh, Supervisor Dan Stork from Mount Vernon, and Supervisor Kathy Smith from the great Sully District, because, you know, obviously, right. I think Sully's great. That's where I live. <laughs> so we, we do have a really good continuity and, and we have a good way of talking to each right. other. As you know, I've embarked, uh, the county, we have embarked on a, on a countywide strategic plan. I also understand that you're doing the same as well. Well, tell me where you are in that process because it's very integral to what we're doing here from a top-down view or bottom-up view. Um, we have a lot of similarities that we have to make sure we can, I would say, make the meal together. Right. So where are you with your strategic plan? Well, I'm really excited to share that we had our development year this past year and our board unanimously approved it in our last meeting in June on the 26th. And it includes five strategic goals, all in the form of student outcomes and a commitment to four pillars, which is how we're gonna go about our work together. Mm -hmm. So we're thrilled uh, to have that North Star for 2030 and just looking forward to partnering with our county colleagues um, staff and community and families to bring it off the page. And when you say outcomes and four pillars, you know, I'm, I'm looking at how we move forward in Fairfax. We graduate a lot of students every year. We do. We have a lot of opportunities for workforce development. Tell me how that strategic plan is going to help us with our workforce development and how we as a county can help you get that to a better place. So, Brian, I'm glad you asked that. I had an opportunity to visit with the Northern Virginia Chamber and Tech Council this past Monday and talk about how, you know, 65% of the children in classes today in public schools in America are preparing for careers that don't exist today. So when I think about the types of supports that um, our students are going to need to be successful in this next economy, um, really the critical thinking, problem solving, ability to work collaboratively. And I think one of the things our community could think about in a bigger way is making safe spaces for our children to mm -hmm. fail. Mm -hmm. Because when you think about innovation, um, often there's failure involved in that, right? Like very, <laughs> I don't know that there's a time in history that anything important has been created that there hasn't been <laughs> trial and error, right? But I think for many of our young people today, it's not safe to fail. And so we don't take risks and therefore we're not learning in a way we could. Because I think when you learn, you're at that edge of your competence, right? It's like when you compete. Yeah. You don't want to keep competing against people that aren't giving you, you know, a good game. You want to take your game to the next level by continuing to to game up, right? So not to, <laughs> um, we haven't uh, played ball yet. I know that's on the agenda, but <laughs> when I think about our community, just making it safe, like the safer to try than not to try, I think is really important. You know, it's 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 that advent of we had participation trophies, right? <laughs> and I didn't know where that came from because, you know, I obviously, and you know this, I played a lot of basketball in, right. my, in my life, played a pretty decent level. And I was speaking to my mother the other evening, and I said, what did you do with all my trophies? And she said, what do you mean, the 12 that you had? Right? Because if mm -hmm. you didn't win mm -hmm. the championship, right. you didn't get a trophy. You, you're right. runner-up. Right. But today, that and that kind of drove me to be mm -hmm. better. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't expect to get something just for participating. I expected to get something for actually right. winning. So it's it's interesting um, when you don't win, that is that space that you need to have or create right. that safe space to say, okay, what can I have done better exactly. as opposed to just, right. right? So we talked about basketball. This is not on any script. No. So let's talk about basketball. So let's do that. I, I understand that you used to play basketball. Do you still play basketball? Absolutely. <laughs> 
Absolutely. <laughs> okay. And where did you play basketball at? University of Puget Sound. And I understand that you were a pretty good foul shooter and you had a, a pretty mean crossover, right? I, it's been said. It's been said. So why don't we do this one day? We get to a school because the former superintendent and I would go to all the games, uh, the, the, the state championship games or the regional games right. together. We actually announced the teams. I believe it was Fairfax uh, City versus South County. And then we announced a couple other games. And I tend to go to a lot of the games. So I'm going to ask you and I to, to join up one evening or two evenings because I probably hit about 20 games. So that's kind of my peace place. Right. And and we just go there and have a good time. Would you be willing to, to take an evening out with Brian Hill to go watch some high school basketball, girls or females? doesn't matter to me, as long as they can put the ball in the hoop. Yeah, game on. Game on. Okay. So I, I, will, I want to say this. Uh, you have 25 high schools. Tell me, have you been to every single high school thus far? Yes, I have. Which I think is incredible. But what's even more inc incredible is that we have 26 middle schools and over 140 other schools, elementary schools. And from uh, my little birdie tells me you've been to pretty much all the schools so far in less than a year. That would be correct. Not quite all, but almost all. So how, how the heck, you, where do you find in time to do all this? You know, I think you always schedule what's most important first, and then everything works around that. Um, but you know, as well as I do, leadership is being present, right, showing up. Right. And so I think uh, you can't lead people you don't know um, or programs you don't understand. So it's been a learning curve, I think, but uh, just a joy. I, I, I appreciate you saying that because I am still learning every day here in Fairfax County. I mean, I don't have 160-plus schools to go to, but we do have about 180 facilities. There's a lot of, there's a lot of mileage in this county. I, I, I thank goodness I have a GPS, right, because <laughs> I still think I just spend most of my time driving in circles. What, what's fascinating to me is that when you and I have our calls, it's typically at 5 p.m. on a Monday or a Wednesday, and you're always in your car driving. If you notice, the last four times it has not been raining. I that's, know. That's I, unusual. Yeah, I've talked to the weatherman to make <laughs> sure because I was worried about you because there was a couple times you and I were on the phone, right. and I'm hearing thunder in the background, and you're like, um... It's really raining hard, Brian. Um, do we can can I'm gonna pull over? You know what? Don't pull over. No. We're gonna get off the phone, <laughs> and I, I just want people to understand how often you and I speak because things happen in our world, yeah. and people don't understand how they intersect. And you have been a, a a a charm in understanding how it intersects with my world, and I'm also trying to understand how it intersects with your world. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for that. Do you have any questions or any topics that you want to bring up on this podcast? Because, you know, I, I, I don't want to steal the show here. You're, you're, you're my guest. Well, thank you, Brian. And I, when I think about you and your work here and your leadership, if you could give me a piece of advice um, as I complete my first year and start my second, what would be the advice you would give me? Listen. Listen, we, we all need to listen before we speak. Um, the more we can listen and take in what is happening around us, because, you know, in my view, um, as we move forward into past COVID, right. right, and you were the epicenter of COVID, right? You didn't know what was going on, right. but we thought we all could just talk it out and we we're going to yeah. go through. Well, I've learned in Fairfax County, and thanks for the board to give me almost six years to learn this, is I have to sit back and listen a little bit figure out where we need to get, where we need to go, devise a plan on how to get there, and then start articulating and communicating that plan yeah. to move forward. I am very blessed that I have 12,000 plus employees who do an excellent job. But listening, in my view, is more important than anything else. Listening and then being able to communicate how to change or how to move forward. I don't have a lot of words. But I want to be able to articulate it quickly so we can move forward. And I will tell, and my staff knows this, family's always first. Mm -hmm. 
And if we are going down a road where it doesn't make sense, you know, the pivot yeah. is key. Yeah. Right? Because I'm going to give you more kudos for understanding that it's not going well and changing course right. than to continue to try to make it happen. So uh, my, my advice to you is just keep doing you and be you. Yeah. Right? But don't call me when it's raining. <laughs> I know. Those were some calls. I actually thought <laughs> I'm going to, you know, I've never seen rain quite like that, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to go to some basketball games. Uh, we're going to hopefully, you just had the Emmys Awards at your Cappies. school. Cappies. Talk to me a little bit about that and how, because I saw a couple pictures with you smiling at that event. So And I was like, wow, some board members were invited and I was just sitting up working. Well, I will make sure you're invited this coming year, Brian. Um, you know, I think it's another one of the examples in this community about how we support our young right. people and support the whole child, right? Education in all its forms and the arts, uh, the theater arts in particular, uh, just a powerful representation of the talent of our young people, of the adults working with our young people, our educators, family support, and the community commitment yeah. uh, to our young people. It's a fabulous program and just really inspiring. You know, as part of our strategic plan, we have cultural uh, awareness and we have Arts Fairfax. So we have the, we just, the Board of Supervisors just adopted uh, the comprehensive plan for arts. And that is phenomenal. So, Lila Gordon, thank you for spearheading that and all the people that worked with us on that. Uh, Michael Lieberman, who used to be the director of Channel 16 and Cable and Wireless Services, thank you so much because we do have, as you said, community and yeah. great support. In closing, I just wanted to say thank you. I also want to thank Peyton, who is one of our interns or your interns, going to Langley High School. He, run, he throws a javelin. And he's looking at MIT and nice. Harvard. And I want to thank Maith, who's going to West Poe, and she wants to go to UVA. They are here in the audience listening to us talk about stuff. And they asked me some really interesting questions. Uh-oh. <laughs> in the, no, it's good. It's good. You know, you were in finance. How'd you get this job? Right. I, said, I don't know. So I just want everybody to know that you are, you've been a, a breath of fresh air. We thank you for being here with us here in Fairfax County. The 409 is what I call it because it's 409 or 406 square miles. Nobody can tell me which one it is, but I'm not going to worry about three miles when it's so great. But I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for being here today. And thank you for listening to Connect with County Leaders. And Dr. Michelle Reed and I will be back soon. And we will be sending maybe some selfies at some basketball games. Right. Yeah? Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to see the moves. There you go. I still got them a little bit. All right. All right. And thanks again, everybody. This has been the Connect with County Leaders podcast with Fairfax County Executive Brian Hill. To listen to other great Fairfax County podcasts, visit fairfaxcounty.gov slash podcasts. And for additional audio content, tune in to Fairfax County Government Radio at fairfaxcounty.gov slash radio. For more Fairfax County news and information, visit News Center online at fairfaxcounty.gov slash news. The Connect with County Leaders podcast is produced by the Fairfax County, Virginia government.